We all know that skateboarding is very hard, but do we know why? Today I'm going to watch these videos of scientists trying to explain skateboarding. I want to see if they have a better understanding than me, a skateboarder of 20 years. First up, we got the classic Niger Houston demonstrates the physics of skateboarding sports science ESPN archives ESPN 9 million subs. Sounds ideal. Yeah. Oh yeah, let's go. We enlisted the X Games defending street skate champion, Nija Houston. Force. Okay. Nija is able to ollie up to more than kickflip. half his own height because of an imbalance of <laughs> forces. Kickflip back tail is an ollie. <laughs> Foot sensors reveal. Nigel oh my God. Presses down on the tail with nearly 300 pounds of force. Dang, that's kind of sick. His body weight. I wonder Acting what was lever, <laughs> what was going on there. Like, what the are these doing? Or the fulcrum at 600 degrees a second. When the tail makes Interesting. contact with the ground, an equal and opposite reaction force rebounds the skateboard, <laughs> giving liftoff. And because gravity exerts an equal force on all objects, Nija and his board are able to travel through the air in unison. <laughs> Okay, I mean, yeah, uh, makes sense. The grip tape on top of Nigel's skateboard. Yo, simulation. For like silicon carbide material. As Nigel slides his feet, the resistance created from breaking these bonds enable him to control the direction of the board's motion. With yeah, the okay. kick of a foot, lasting just 12 hundredths of a second. <laughs> Nigel can bring the skateboard to the optimum height and rotate the board at about 1800 degrees a second. That's as fast as a helicopter board. Yeah, Nigel. Balance. When Nigel grinds, he has to pinpoint 1200 pounds of landing force on a surface only about half the width of a <laughs> hockey puck. Even though <laughs> Damn, arm, backside flip out. Percent of his total that was lit. They're crucial for balance. This yeah. increases the total balance. mass away from the pivot point, creating a higher moment of inertia. In other words, a greater resistance to changes in rotation. I love how Nigel just result, did lit tricks for this random video. Balance, Damn, Trey 5 0. In a regular spot. Nolly Heal 5. Okay, that was a lot right Thanks for there. Watching. I think we need to get a little bit of a slower definition right now. New mind, how the ollie works, physics of skateboarding's most common trick. Here we are at the beginning of skateboarding in the pools. Originated in the 1970s by Alan Ollie Gelfin, his eponymous maneuver allows skateboarders to leap and arch over obstacles. The ollie is an orchestrated sequence of balance, movement, and forces applied via the skateboarder's body. It's all reduced to a few principles of physics, force, torque, Newton's third law and friction. To perform an ollie, a skateboarder unintentionally focuses on two factors, the net force and net torque applied to the board. Okay. Force, similar to gravity, pushes and pulls an object in a specific direction, and torque rotates an object in a specific direction relative See, to the object. See, I wonder if understanding pivot. this can help me ollie higher. As the skateboarder approaches I'm the actually obstacle, curious. he begins to bend his knees, yes. pull in his arms, and close his shoulders in preparation of the vertical thrust necessary to clear the obstacle, essentially pushing down on the ground. However, Newton's third law states, for every force you apply, there will be an equal and Newton opposite looks force like? applied back onto you. The ground will push back at the skateboarder with an equal and opposite force, thrusting him into the air. This is also known as pop. Mm -hmm. During the pop phase, the oh, skateboarder switch? opens his shoulders and extends his arms and legs. This orchestrated sequence of events affects the torque of the skateboard. Dang, that was pretty sick. Was the act of job. pushing down on the tail of the board causes the back wheels to become a pivot point. Yeah, so it's interesting. This is the pivot point, but I'm always telling beginners they want to put their whole foot on the tail, and I tell them to use their toes. So I guess our body is using our toes to push and leverage right on the edge, and then that gives more uh, power against this pivot point. The I tail think. end of the skateboard rotates expert. down, and the nose rotates up leaving the board at an angle. However, an additional step is further required to clear the obstacle. Mm -hmm. As the parabola begins, the skateboarder then uses friction to lift the board even so higher. Like, I wonder if the person that made this is a skateboarder. Friction is a force that opposes motion between two surfaces. So in this case, the skateboarder glides his front foot up the grip tape. 
The opposing interaction of these two surfaces caused the board to move further upward. Let's try this one. Science of skateboarding in trouble. Originating in the United States, that involves riding and performing Yo. tricks using a skateboard, as well as a recreational Dang, activity, not the an art best form, Ollie. an entertainment industry job, and a method of transportation. Physics is the natural science that studies matter, its fundamental constituents, its motion and behavior through space and time. But today, we will mainly focus on two topics. One. How do the skaters maintain their speed through an extremely clever use of angular momentum called pumping? And two, <laughs> calculating the maximum height a skater might be able to air off the ramp. Okay, interesting. One, pumping. Yeah, we got the homie pumping from Sunnyvale. Basically a skateboarding technique. Me and him did a collab video the together. Rider's feet leaving the board. Pumping can be done by turning or on a transition, like a ramp or quarter pipe. When applied to longboards, it is also known as long distance skateboard pumping or LDP. What? Pumping is a technique similar to pumping no, a surfboard. No, it's board. not. You don't really pump if a longboard ever. If we the conservation of energy, we should come to the conclusion that a <laughs> These videos are wild already. no higher than they were on the other side of the ramp. Gravitational potential energy gets converted to kinetic energy as the skater goes down one side <laughs> of the ramp, then gets converted back to gravitational potential energy as they go up the other side. Yeah. This is very similar to the case of a pendulum, which will never get higher than its starting point once it's released. Skaters can maintain or even gain energy between one side of the ramp and the other. <laughs> I mean, so does this mean yeah, skateboarders are we're trying to the gain law energy. Of conservation of energy? Skateboarders are very clever, and have figured out the fact how to utilize conservation of angular momentum to gain energy each time they go up and down the ramp using a technique called pumping. By starting with bent knees, like the skater at the bottom of the ramp <laughs> and the figure above, and then extending like them figure. as they go up through the transition of the ramp, the skateboarder brings their center of mass closer to their axis of rotation, reducing their moment of inertia and increasing their angular velocity. It is kind of crazy to the explain it like that. There's the so much going on. And again, going up the left side of the ramp, too. Maximum air height. <laughs> just Have got you ever random wondered, street why clips can't a skateboarder <laughs> launch themselves to 100 feet in the air off a half pipe? It all has to do with centrifugal force. Okay. It is a force arising from the body's inertia, which appears to act on the body five. moving in a circular path and is directed away from the center around which the body is moving. We can calculate the energy gained each time the skater pumps. Here's the key. As a skater goes up or down a ramp, they undergo circular motion, and so they feel a centrifugal force pushing them down towards their feet, forcing them to bend their knees. When this force is strong enough, pumping becomes impossible because the skater can't extend their legs, making them unable to gain any more energy and restricts them. So we can find that the maximum height a skater can attain by considering the max speed at which the centrifugal force would be too great okay. for them to pump Okay, interesting. Again, what he just said then was in a vert ramp. He said you could always pump higher until you have so much speed that you can no longer press up against the pump to generate any more speed. But I would definitely argue that no skater has ever achieved that. I think a skater can always pump slightly harder um, and gain more speed because there's so many other variables that are affecting them from being able to reach this maximum. I can no longer stand up because I'm going so far. We got another one, hip science, physics hey, of guys? skateboarding. It's Justin from hip science. And today Hello. we're gonna be talking about the physics of skateboarding. So imagine that our reference point is the center of mass, which is right here at the center of the board where it balances. That's where gravity acts. So in order to get the board to leave That's the ground, interesting. They all have said that, but I never really thought about distance, that. Otherwise known as a torque. And I guess that makes tail. sense. That makes the board rotate around this axis. So it rotates down. It smacks off the ground. The normal force pushing back up on the board from the ground sends it into the air. That's called pop. Then you use your front foot yeah. and friction between your front foot and the grip tape to level out the board up in the air, and then gravity wins the battle and brings the skateboarder and the board together as a system back to the ground. A kickflip is a lot like an ollie in that with your back foot, you use the same torque motion to create the pop. Yeah, but dog. with your front foot, instead of sliding it up to level out the board, you slide it off the side to flip the board. Another trick that skateboarders can do that involves a 360 degree rotation around a different axis is the 360 shove it. So in this case, Ooh, instead of rotating say around flip. this axis, like the kickflip, you're rotating around this axis so that the board is spinning instead of flipping. I hope this video makes you better at skateboarding. Thank you. It probably won't. Whoa. Let me try and put a different spin on it. Trailer. So check it out, yo. Oh Here's my science, God, we're rapping. Backs. It's no wonder all these cats questioning what class is the practice. Got you flipping round an axis, buttery skate tricks. Physics makes them smooth like chapstick. 
And as no for physics, way. let's start this disc course about force and also force at a distance, which is torque. See, torque's like force, but it causes a rotation, a rotation which is caused by angular acceleration. That's all it is, each move, each trick, a bunch of torques, projectile motions, mechanics. Shouts to Newton, each move I stick, keeping me centered <laughs> like my center of mass. Right, Isaac? I Might can't I believe win? this. For more people to see, that skateboarding's like a classroom for creativity and tenacity too. See, there's so much to learn. Out on the street, watch your feet causing flips and turns. But like in life, nothing comes first try. Smack the ground a few times before you Dang, learn to fly. Dang, we got some motivation Feel in here. Smack back, that's pop, a force that's normal. Who knew that education could be so informal? Bro, yeah. That was incredible. Does this guy still post? We got Physics Girl, very famous YouTuber, and she talks to Rodney Mullen, basically the pioneer of skateboarding, inventor of basically every single street skating trick, and they're gonna dive into the physics. This video is about why skateboarding is an incredibly rich combination of fundamental physics with really difficult mechanics, and it is a beautiful example of physics in action. We did a bunch of 360s, yeah. and so that's conservation of angular momentum, so you're yeah. coming out wide, and what happens okay. on that because Rodney likes to talk me. very fast. That one is is one where you can't pull in your arms too fast because you spin right out of control. It's amazing to me how much of Rodney's use of physics is so inherent in his comfort with the skateboard. That is what's cool about skateboarding is, like I said, I can do 360 flip, I can do many different tricks, but it's fun to actually think like about the physics of what is actually happening. Even pumping, it's almost like this intuitive thing that you can just achieve. But then it's funny to think about like actually what the physics are doing. You know how that works. Like as long as you keep the big radius and your velocity will stay kind of mellow until friction will dissipate the energy. So you can gradually pull them in and keep your velocity kind of sort of constant. But if you yank them in, then your velocity increases like crazy and you'll be unstable. And you See, I was never very good at this. He's doing it in nose Manny. You know? Look how know he's pivoting you. on the one it wheel there. It seems to me like I could have just allowed Rodney to keep teaching us the physics of skateboarding. When I first started looking at skate tricks, I noticed that most of the tricks are some combination of the skateboard flipping Dang, or so rotating about puzzle. its three major axes. See? Let's call them the Why long not? axis, the <laughs> mid axis, and the perpendicular axis. So once I realized that, I realized okay. the skateboard is shaped a lot like something that I play with every day. Try this with me. I made Rodney do it. If you try flipping your phone about the long axis, yeah. okay, kickflip style, the perpendicular axis, it's it's whatever. <laughs> but if you try flipping it about the mid axis, we'll try it. That seems trickier, I think, just holding it one. Ooh, okay. Oops, it did a gainer. <laughs> no, that's really hard. Dang, she it knows this stuff. The reason it's tricky to flip about the mid-axis is not just a hard trick. It's a thing. It's a mathematical thing known as the intermediate axis theorem. Get this. It's the okay, same exact go. reason that this T-handle spinning in the space station spontaneously flips around over and over. The intermediate axis theorem will affect a tennis racket, a book, anything where the object has three different obvious axes and the moment of inertia is different for all three. What I mean by that is that the oomph that you need to spin it about each of the individual axes is different for all three of them. The axis with the middle level of oomph needed to get it to spin in the case of the phone is that mid axis, known more generally as the intermediate axis. The reason why the mid axis is so hard to spin involves a lot of complicated <laughs> math that all works out to define the intermediate so axis the theorem. So true mid axis would be a monster flip. Where you pop in and go straight back. Spin about the intermediate axis in an object like this is always unstable. And impossible so or a 360 flip is. is not really That's in the mid axis. That's why flipping it is so hard. That's really hard. Yeah, one might say impossible. <laughs> okay. Yeah, we're we're not impossible is I a think bit I do. Off the rest of us are like Huh? I asked if there was a trick where the skateboard spins about the intermediate axis, and I was told that there was. But see, and it's look, called like the impossible. This is nolly impossible. Watch Rodney's nolly impossible. His foot actually oh, guides the board to make sure that it keeps spinning about just that axis. When I was asking him, like, is there a trick like that, and uh, he was like, yeah, there is. But you follow it with your, with your foot, and I was like. Interesting. And if he lets it go, well, physics says that it will probably become unstable. In fact, he did another trick where it starts out spinning flip? like I don't an impossible, so. but look what happens as soon as he lets it go. Almost immediately, <laughs> I mean, it started spinning trick. with much more complicated motion because <laughs> he, it became well, unstable. Well, he flicked that because out of a cat's me, butt, but this yeah, one okay. without the foot seems like it would be impossible because of the intermediate axis theorem. 
Well done, I learned something. The reason that skateboarders have to keep their foot on the board to guide an impossible is partially to overcome the intermediate axis theorem. It's the same reason that the teething in space starts spontaneously flipping. Kick flips had been done, shove it so had been done. I love how it says had been done, had aka been done. I invented them. It was them. called impossible because it would take too long to hang out and you'd never really get it down. So, so what happened was I got her, I'm like credited with creating the trick or whatever. So Wait, I, the impossible? Yeah. And so <laughs> I got Casual. I got hurt. Or whatever. Yeah. I didn't name it. I just kept stomping on the tail and I learned how to follow it. Yeah. That's the way That's the trick so works. Sick. You learn It's a, crazy what, that like that was not scoop. very long ago. Mm. To scoop it. So it's a scoop track trick. But the way I like the Nolly when it had a more straight and true I'd love to learn Nolly impossible. Nolly I can't impossible. do it right now. Is because it goes with the grain, it sort of pole vaulted and then you track it that way, which is a little harder. That's why so yeah. it's so rare to see people do it. That was really cool. I enjoyed that thoroughly. It's funny how skateboarders can understand the physics better than the physics people, but then it's funny for both of them to talk about skateboarding and talk about physics and merge together. So that was a really cool video. Shout out to the homie that did the rap. That is it for now. I like skate.